Speech off. Can't stop recording. But speech off. Um, there's no other way for me to do a recording at the moment. So, yeah, I have to use the YouTube app until I find another way to do video. Oh, Maddie. I'm going to take a photo of this hand towel. It's a hand towel that's meant to go in the bathroom, not for the kitchen. So, anyway, I'm going to have to have a big discussion with my cleaner next week and I'm going to have to start doing some sacking, I think. I need to tell support workers they're not going to support what I want. They can bloody leave because they're in my life. They're not here to help themselves. They're here to help me. And if they can't get the ball rolling, they can leave. That's how it is. They can't help me, they can help someone else. I wonder who else we know who said that. If anybody's watched Anne with an E, Anne with an E is a great movie and believe me, this Marilla, who looks after her, has said this many a time. So I kind of know what she's going through. Even though we live in modern times, it's, well, Marilla being the character, wouldn't realise that it's very much alike today as it was back then. In the, I don't know, the 1800s, 1700s. In the 1800s, I believe, this book was written. Um, you know, it's a very old book and a very old movie. And believe me, the stuff that went on then is kind of the same. It's just more modernised and it's more, yes, we use modern language. Yes, we use modern technologies. But believe me, the way people annoy us is almost the bloody same. So, yeah. Oh, God. Well, thanks, cleaner, and it's my choice to rip the thing off and chuck it in the bin. Okay, no, that's fair enough. She just has to make sure that she gets everything done and when she's helping me she does so much to help me and then uh, the rest of it's up to me.
put milk on top and mix that in. Oh, yum! Yeah. Mm. Yum. Yeah. I love it. Okay, so if you guys don't hear properly for a few minutes, it's because I'm putting you on the table with my bowl of cereal and I'm going to be making my cup of coffee. That's what I'm going to be doing. People think they have to put a dash of milk when they do coffee they just go oh we'll just do a dash of milk it's like I like a lot of milk with all these different coffees not just a bloody dash yes great don't waste my stuff but at the same time it's goddamn coffee use up a lot of milk
Um, I love coffee with a lot of milk in it because <coughs> it makes it taste more creamy. Like, don't get me wrong, the cleaners like, and other people like to do less milk, but I'm a milk person. I've got to have milk in everything. And I love my stuff tasting creamy and milky. Oh, this is Milo cereal. I thought it was bloody Nutri-Grain. Oh. oh, well. Mm. Anyway. I need to buy some body lip butter. I need to get some. I didn't bloody... When I submitted my order yesterday, do you think I went and got it? No, I didn't. Oh. Well, what am I meant to do? I love Milo cereal and I love coffee with a lot of milk. Yum. Salted caramel latte. Salted caramel latte is bloody beautiful shit. And you just have one sugar, only one spoon of sugar in it. The um, Jarrah coffee is yum because you don't need as much sugar added. You just have one sugar or half a sugar. You don't have to have that much sugar in it, you know. My lips need a good clean up they're a bit crook eh? very dry and chafed
I cannot wait to receive my grocery, on, grocery online order. I'll be doing a WhatsApp recording to someone else who I speak to of my order. While I'm talking, of course, and... Um, I will be sitting around. This Milo cereal is yum. I'm trying to think of what else I need to talk about, but there isn't much, so... <coughs> I will be doing an unboxing recording. It might have to happen a couple of times because I'll be receiving, I'll be receiving parcels at different days. And tomorrow, when I come home from my outing, I'm going to review my banking situation because I was a bit fearful yesterday that I wouldn't have enough money to do more online shopping. Um, I was told by my support worker for Saturdays when she takes me out not to do too much more online shopping as she wants room to take me to places to spend a bit of money too, which that does make sense because... I like to spend money on outings and I like to spend money on internet shopping. So now that she knows that, she's like, oh, no, keep that money aside. We need that money. And it's just like, yeah, and we have to go and get cash out <coughs> at Woolworths before I um go anywhere. That's, oh, oh maybe I can't do online shopping tomorrow. I was going to check how much money I've got left and then buy a couple of things from the butcher. That isn't going to work. Oh, bastard. No, it's not going to work at all. Um. Oh, well. Um.
Okay, so <sighs> in two weeks' time, when I get my next pension, um, I am going to be getting actually, no, what am I going to have in my freezer by then? Maybe I think I need to just give up for a bit. Not entirely for online shopping, but, uh, excuse me guys, but when I eat, that's what happens, and it just stops itself and just gets back to normal, so um, if there was anything bad occurring, I would be going, shake of the pill box, shake of the pill bottle by now, so that ain't happening yet, <laughs> yet, um... I, um, don't want to entirely give up on online shopping, but I do need to, um, I'm going to share my box of chocolates out, actually. I'm going to, okay, so I'm going to me, Rebecca, problem is how am I going to wrap those chocolates up oh god what am I going to do um yeah what am I going to do to make the chocolates look nice um Jesus <laughs> what am I going to do <laughs> um Mm, I hate buying boxes of chocolates. Too expensive. Um, fuck. Anyway, what I'm trying to get at now is I... In a couple of weeks, I'm going to get the status of my fridge and freezer and basically decide then, is it worth doing any online shopping or not? Because otherwise I could be doing grocery shopping and then realise I've got too much groceries there. I've got too many things. Today I had to get groceries that some of which I don't need immediately but I need because <coughs> it's one of those situations <coughs> where if I say I oh, know I don't need that product and then next week I think, oh, I do need to buy that product. It might not be available. So if I get it today when it's available, then it sits in the pantry for longer until I need it. It sits in the pantry or in the drawer with my bags and food wraps and that until I need it, you know. Um... So... um yeah, they're the things I have to consider in two weeks' time. Do I honestly need to do online shopping immediately or do I wait an extra week? But then if I use farmer's markets that does online order selection and delivery, I could do an order now, but I might be waiting until next Wednesday. Well, next Monday or next Wednesday to get my actual delivery order. So, um, yeah. <coughs> my other issue is I would have to write in comments, um, some fruits has to be cut where Oranges are fine, mangoes are fine, but if I want pawpaw, I have to write things like, please cut the skin off, please take the seeds out. Please take away seeds and pawpaw skin. Um, because that way I know that I can eat it without um, having any problems. And watermelon... 
Yes, I know how to cut watermelon, but I still struggle with it. So I might even have to ask them, please take skin off watermelon. But I'm sure that can be done. Um, did I just hear something? <laughs> I um I need to check the light switches. They don't get turned off. I notice as I feel around, I feel that the light switches aren't being switched off. Which I can't tell that they're on. Bloody fucking sighted people. Um Okay, so I have to consider in two weeks' time, do I just wait, you know, for a full three weeks to get online shopping or do I wait for only two weeks? I have to decide when that time comes because my support workers are like, please, you can do online shopping, but when we're going out, please save your money for that outing because that's when we can help you. It's like... I know, but what if I want to do a big spend up anyway? <laughs> so they're the things we're sort of fighting over at the moment. But then I like my support workers because um, they know that I'm going to find out what product labels are and what fruit looks like and feels like and all that, what they reckon fruit looks like. Um, and then I just need to find the same sort of thing online. I can't believe I bought an app the other day for 10 bucks and it doesn't work so I've had to pay for an app that doesn't even work and that kind of sucks it's like I've did it to myself I ripped myself off but that's why I'm not prepared to pay for apps that I know aren't worth paying for you're better off getting free apps because the money paid ones where you're paying to buy that app is no better than a really crappy free app because you're paying for something that you can't use. So you're ripping yourself off of money that you don't even have to spend. Oh, I love salted caramel coffee with a lot of milk. Mm -mm. <coughs> And I do prefer Jarra over Makona because Makona is nice. I like some of the Makona coffee, but Jarra is a lot more subtle in its flavour and its texture. <clears throat> it's not so bitter. It might have been processed with a bit more sugar, you know. But at least when I do add sugar to Jarrah coffee, I only need one spoon of sugar. I don't need two sugars added to Jarrah. And I hate Nescafe. I don't drink that. I'm not drinking Nescafe again. Ugh. Yuck. Absolutely disgusting. I don't drink decaf coffee either. When people say, do you have any decaf? I'm just like, oh shit, didn't buy any. Oops. I have decided I can drink half strength. I can drink quarter strength decaf coffee. I just, not decaf, non, not, not caffeinated. Um, so normal coffee with that's not decaf, I can drink really weak coffee, but I can't even stand decaf coffee. It's, reasonable but it's just not doesn't taste like normal coffee um so anyway i got my problems all sorted 
I tell the doctor every time I drink coffee, I just say, yeah, my problem's fixed today. I had a cup of coffee. (laughs) Then when he wants to be serious, I'm really blunt with him. I just say, listen, do you know how I work through issues? And I tell him, I just say, if I have to work through issues, I work through ones that are afflicted or inflicted by me. If somebody causes problems for me, so that it's my issue, I then say, no, it's not my issue. I'm not going to deal with it. (coughs) If someone has the audacity to get offended at me and argue at me so it's something I have to work through, I just say, no, you're the one that gets offended at me. You're the one that argues at me. You have a problem with me. You need to work through your problems that you have with me. I don't need to work through problems that I don't have with you. I'm not causing you to be offended. You're the one that chooses to be offended. I'm not asking you to be offended. And then I tell the doctor that if I think I need to take medication, um, for whatever reason, we discuss why I do or don't need it and all this sort of stuff. And I'll either take it for so long and decide actually it's good, I'll keep taking it, or I won't want it anymore and no, I'm okay without it. That's just how it is. That's how blunt I am with my doctors. Yeah, I used to take sustain eye drops all the time in my eyes. Now I don't need them at all. Used to always need Celevisc. Now I hardly ever need it. It's not something that, oh... Oh, I'm just going to lie and say that I don't need medication that I don't want to comply with because that way I'm not in any pain but I'm really suffering. No, I don't do that. If I'm really suffering, I need more medication. If I'm not suffering, I need less medication. It is how I live. I don't need to be non-compliant with anything. If I don't need something, I don't need it. If the doctor tells me you need to take less of these lollies or less of that stuff, it's like, um, when I see improvements, I will take less. Until then, no, I won't. So it's like I'm being non-compliant to medical advice by taking too much medicine or cough lollies. No, I'm not. I'm just doing what I need at the time and the doctor needs to respect that and I'll follow medical advice I have to be comfortable doing it. I'm the one that has to live with that, not the doctor. So for me to be non-compliant is when the doctor tells me to do something and I just say, no, I'm not going to do it. Now that's non-compliance. And even then it's almost like I've got a reason because I don't like cleaning my eyes, so I don't do it. But then when the doctor cleans my prosthetic eye for me and decides that it can't be that hard to do, well, then I start learning how to do it and I do it. So my non-compliance to treatment is I'm scared, it hurts, I'm stressed. And occasionally it's, well, I'm not doing it, it's that simple. But then eventually um, I do learn how to do things because... Non-compliance doesn't last forever with me anyway. It does when I don't need something, I physically don't need it and I'm not going to pretend and lie to people and tell them I need something I don't need either. Then the doctor can do however many assessments and go, oh yeah, that's true, it's like, oh well, don't listen to me. You know, Just believe whatever you want to believe and when you find out that I'm not lying to you then maybe you'll change your mind and decide I don't need a lot of stuff either. That's the arguments I always have with doctors. (laughs) And then when I tell the GP I don't need sustained eye drops and I bet you when the ophthalmologist does the assessment he'll say I'm okay. The doctor's like, no he won't. I'm like, yes he will. And then he reckons I'm fine and I'm like... Well, see, there you go. There you have it.
Um, yeah, um, I just do what treatments I need. Some of it's permanent because it's bloody permanent, not because oh, I have to lie to the doctor to make it medication permanent because or oh, it's so that if they tell me to stop taking it, I don't have to follow instructions. Like, no, if I need something permanently, I probably have to actually take it permanently, not for any other reason. And if I don't need something permanently then it's not because, oh, that's right, the doctor wants me on this for the rest of my life, so I'm just not going to take it and I'll lie to him and tell him I'm improving when I'm, you know, oh, I'm as sick as a dog and I'm telling you I'm not suffering. Like, if I don't need something permanently, then I don't need it. If it gets back to me taking the tablet again later and then we decide I need it permanently, then all right. You know, if I didn't need something, then I do need it, then that is how my body is. If I don't need it, and I still don't need it a few years down the track, whatever tablet it is, then, well, my body is obviously okay. And I'm not someone else's body, so I don't know. <laughs> I only know about my life. Um, <clears throat> it's like my, well, I need to have another discussion with my support worker before I let her go. Um, just her attitude about things is if she's suffering, I have to suffer. And if she's thirsty, I have to have a drink. And if she's cold or hungry or sick, then I have to be like, no, I don't, I don't like that attitude from people. I want respect. My body is not attached to someone else's body. And if you're a conjoined twin, then it's highly likely you're going to be affected by your twin. So people need to ask both, is both okay or just your twin? Now, I'm not conjoined to anybody. I don't feel anyone else's body effects. I don't feel cold for other people I feel cold for myself I don't feel sick and hungry for everyone else I feel it if it's me if other people are affected by whatever they're affected by well I can't feel their effect I don't know what they're going through so I think next Monday will determine whether I keep my support worker or not but it's not looking good. You know, <coughs> I don't like people who think they can push me around because they think they can. You know, people take advantage of me because they like me and they can take advantage of me. And I think that's pretty wrong, you know. That's why I like my other two support workers because... They're caring enough to be helpful, but they're not relational in a personal way. They're just helpful, and I like how they're helping me out. And, yeah, I, um, you know, I think people who are really nice without being overly relational are people that aren't going to push me around, which is good.
<coughs> what a pity I can't go down to the mailbox later. Mm. I'm going to get my support worker to take me to the mailbox in the morning. Actually, no, I'm going to wait till the workers are not there tonight and go to the mailbox. That's all I'm going to do. Otherwise, I'd have to wait till morning for my support worker to take me to the mailbox. But, yeah, um, I um, need to sort a few things out on Monday and it might have to do with me sacking my support worker. I just have to decide what's going to happen because, you know, I can't have people telling me what to do and telling me what stress I can and can't put up with, telling me what I want, telling me that I put myself in hospital. I do put myself in there because do you think I want to sit at home and die? Do you think I want to actually get sick in the first place? Do you think I want to actually go to these doctors and say, hey, guess what? I actually want to suffer. How, how much do I have to do to make myself suffer? Like... No, I don't. So yeah, I'm going to have to do something about this support worker. Because yeah, if she's going to push me around, I'm going to have to get rid of her. Which isn't good. I don't want to do that. But... I like other support workers where they say um, they'd be quite happy to help me but, you know, try to do as much as I can and if I'm still not getting somewhere, then they know they definitely have to help me. It's not just they're pushing me around or anything. Um... Yeah, it's not that my other two support workers just suddenly want to push me around it's more that they are helpful because they love helping me and they're like just ring around and try to do online shopping see how far you get show us if there's any mistakes that you can't fix or if there's anything that isn't working yeah because that way they know they're helping me but they're waiting for me to say oh this isn't working and then they're like oh well no that's and my support worker for tomorrow this is where I think she's really great she doesn't let me tell her things like oh I'm just going to go get another doctor's referral because she wants to sort out going to this eye clinic as often as we can because it's close to everything in the city and when I get orientation training, I'll be able to walk across from this place into the city. I'll be able to meet my instructors in the city as well. And if I decide, oh, I'd rather just go to the hospital, bugger it, you know, just get me a refer referral for the hospital and then the doctor bloody will do too. Um, then that means that there'll be less of a reason for me to actually go into the city and the support worker who picks me up on Thursday she's just like no fucking way we're not going to let you just not go into the city because she knows she's helping me now but she knows if I don't do white cane training she'll be like oh that's a disappointment because what if I want to go out without a support worker you know what if I want to go out when I don't need one when I don't have a support worker so, yep, we're sorting all this crap out tomorrow. <laughs> because she can also sense that I am trying to worry about less car parking fees or fines. Um, <coughs> I've just told her last week, this parking and paid parking is not working because now I don't have any money. Because when I spend it on groceries and other 
items from wherever, whatever shopping store to bring it all back home. Well, then I just got no money left. I can't save any money. <laughs> so now she's like, oh my God. So yeah. In my book, what's the point in paying for parking fees when you can pay the same amount of money in a taxi and not have to pay parking fees? I'd rather use that NDIS money for public transport where I can actually go places and pay for that transport than pay for a friggin' car parking fee and then when I need a taxi, I don't have the money for a taxi. Anyway, I guess what can I do about that for now? I just have to play it by ear. The support worker's not happy at all. She's just like... Mm. She knows that I might end up saying, just forget it, I'm going to a new eye clinic. She doesn't want me to do that because she knows that means I won't... I'll be able to go into the city, but there'll be no incentive for me to have to be there. Apart from going to the Queen Street Mall. Um, so, yeah, the support worker's really concerned, I think. <laughs> Poor support worker. Or um, But yeah, I want to see how well I can sort out this mess with my other support worker for Mondays because I don't want to lose her. She has been really helpful, but in saying that she's been helpful, she's very pushy and very... She can't let me do what I want to do. So I've had to talk with her today, and if the discussions don't work, then she needs to find another client because I can't get along with everybody. Which will make me cry for a few weeks. Well, I'm hoping everything can be all sorted tomorrow. Um, otherwise, yeah. Um, I honestly don't know what I will do. Yeah, I, oh, I'll have to get my records sent from the eye clinic to the PA hospital if I end up going there. Otherwise, I don't know what I'm going to do. 
do not know. And then my plan manager asks stupid questions which I don't know how to answer. Um, I don't know how I'm going to answer that question. I think I need reimbursement of my receipts in full. I don't know why she asks a stupid question that sounds the same in two different ways. It's like she's saying, do you want all the items paid in full on receipts or only as separate items? It's like, what are you trying to say? That you don't want the NDIS to reimburse me for all the items. I think I need to be brave and decide on Monday if I'm going to sack this support worker or not. I just need to make a decision because, you know, when she comes around and then when she leaves, I need to make a choice. Do I sack this person or not? I have to wait for her to leave and then decide I don't want to keep the service agreement with her or I do want to keep the service agreement. I don't like people telling me, oh, you can get all these things back on the NDIS, but you've got to go through a lot of stress to do it. It's like, that's not how I live my life. I don't live that way. I can't stand people who want to treat me like that. Oh dear. Anyway, I have to make a lot of considerations. And the other thing I considered too, everyone's been telling me to save money and I've just made the decision that I don't need to save money because, you know, if it saves up, it saves up. But I'm not concerned if I were to die tomorrow, no one would have any money from me. That doesn't concern me because the money doesn't belong to them. It belongs to me. And if I don't want to leave any money to family or friends when I die, that's my choice. Now, a lot of people would contest the will. thing is, I'm not leaving any money behind at all. So, I don't think I need to save money. I think people want me to save money so they can make claim to it. That's all it is. People say, save up your money in case something goes wrong. So what? They can make a claim for it. If something goes wrong, people can claim whatever money I don't spend. Well, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not saving up money so people can find excuses to take that money from me. You know, so I um, am not going to listen to anybody. I'm only going to do what works for me. I'm only going to spend money how I want to spend money. And that's it. I'm not going to take any advice from people about my life anymore because their advice, their advice is about what they think. Their advice is not necessarily in my best interest. It's not necessarily what I would agree to in my life. Advice is basically people telling me what they think they know when they know nothing. So I don't have to take advice. 
I don't have to do what other people tell me to do in my life, you know. If people are noticing something like my eyes getting infected and like you have to clean your eye because it's infected, then they're not telling me what to do with my life. They're just telling me stuff that is stopping me from getting infections. That's all people are doing and that's great. But when it comes to my money and my life, don't start telling me what to do with my life. It's not up to anybody to decide what happens. So, yeah. Anyway, I guess there's nothing else for me to record besides me talking and talking and talking. So I'm going to get going and if I think of something to talk about later, I do. If I don't, I'll be back when I start receiving parcels at my door.